Hey everyone and welcome back to the channel for another video on World of Warships. This one we're looking at the Missouri and if honestly she is worth your effort. As I know when the Missouri made a return, she became just a standard premium and not a special premium that had enhanced credit earnings. Which she originally was prized for when she was first added to the game. In, I think it was what 2016, maybe. Can't remember, that was as way back. It was just after close beta went. It's going back. That shows how long how old my account is now. <laughs> Damn, it feels old. But yeah, she came back for other events, such as a Pacific War event. And just came back on seals and boxes. But is she worth it still? The fact that the newer ones earn the same amount as a premium ship. Let's find out and see. So let's, talk, let's just talk about a bit of stats. So survivability is pretty standard. 78,000 hit points. 25% repeater reduction. Much expected from an Iowa class. Is main armament is three triple 406mm guns. 26 second reload. 51 second 180 degree turn time. 284 meters maximum dispersion. With a max range of 23.4 kilometers. Her high explosive is nothing special with a max rate, sorry, max damage of 5,700, 37% chance of fire, 68 mm of pen, and initial flaw save 820 meters a second. Her armor piercing isn't much better, well, it's pretty standard armor piercing. Got max damage of uh, 13,500 and a max, well, max speed initial, or the fucking call it, uh, 762 meters a second. So, Guns are just Iowa guns, really, in every aspect. Secondary batteries are pretty standard. They're the 5 inch shield purpose. My ones are at 5.5% chance of fire, 21 mil of pen. And I've got a 10.5 km range on them because I brawl and I like secondary building ships because I like brawling and getting in night fights. But in saying that, there, Missouri is definitely a more medium range ship with her guns. Do get a standard depth charge airstrike with the privateers, reload time is 30 seconds, two attack flights, and max range is 10 kilometers. Essentially, each drop two bombs in the payload, and each does a maximum of 4,600 damage. Your AA defense is very typical of an Iowa. Got 29 joule 20 millimeters, 20 joule, sorry, 20 quad 40 mils, 10 times joule 5 inch. For a maximum shell damage of 1,144, 1944, <laughs> ironic, and continuous damage of 531 with a priority sector reinforcement 35%, high range 5.8, and ability isn't, it isn't the best, but it works if you get what I mean, it's just an Iowa, it's nothing special, it's maximum speed is 33 knots, turning with circle radius 998, a 15.5 second rudder shift depending on how you build her. Concealment is pretty standard for a battleship, 14.1 by sea, 0 0.0 to 10 3 by sub, 3 by air, and 2 is assured. So yeah, it's pretty standard to be honest with you. The mighty Mo in this game, when it was first added, it was out of this fucking world, it really was. It was an extremely good aircraft. As a fact, well, certainly the aircraft was an extremely good battleship. As it got surveillance radar, instead of a spotting aircraft or catapult fighter, which was really good. It meant you could fight destroyers quite nicely and you could be quite dangerous to destroyers, especially if you had your own DD escorting you, our cruiser. And she was especially dangerous to British ships, especially ships like Minotaur or Fiji or Belfast or Neptune. She was a fucking nightmare because. It your smoke screen that you love to hide in, yeah, it was gone. It really was gone. So, pros of the ship. Improved forward bulkhead, which gives her slightly better protection over her sister ships in the Iowa class. She shares nearly all of the same strengths as Iowa. So things such as accurate 16 inch guns, cracking top speed of 33 knots, the AA is outstanding, surveillance radar, it is something unique for which activates for 35 seconds with a range of nine and a half kilometers if I remember correctly. Her damage control party also helps cover for her weak protection against HE so it does give her a decent period of immunity and you can achieve a very very good detection well low surface detection of 12.7 kilometers 
with a good proper build if you wish to go stealth. So she does share the same weaknesses as I were. Her armor protection, especially around the Citadel and the high explosive ammunition. Pointless torpedo belt, well it's not pointless, 25% still 25% but there is tier 7 ships with better. She can't mount the spotting or catapult but I'd rather have the surveillance radar anyways. The enhanced repair party isn't there so you have to be a wee bit more careful. And the maneuverability isn't what you would call the best as if I remember correctly. She's got the largest turning radius of among the tier 9 battleships and second worst rotor shift time if I remember correctly. Or in saying that there, depending on it, also can depend on how you build her in regards to where she sits as well. Be truthful with you. Like for example, what's optimally recommended? So optimally recommended is main armaments 1. That's a, it's a simple shout on that one really. Though auxiliary armaments can be a very popular pick if you wish to reinforce your AA. So to be honest with you, the AA is very vulnerable, so it would be a wise idea at times to reinforce it. Damage Control System 1 or Surveillance Radar 1. Personally speaking, Damage Control Systems 1 for me would be the perfect choice. Radar System 1 isn't a big need, but it does work, as it does give her a 78 second extension on the radar duration, so it's not too bad. Main Battery Modification 2. During gear modification 1, especially to get the rudder shift time down. However, damage control system modification 2 can also be handy as well if you wish to conserve your hit points and health. Now, concealment modification 1 definitely is a go for, in my personal opinion. Definitely a big one to go for. As personally speaking, it is one I went for, so to me, it's definitely a big one to go for. And artillery plotting room is definitely. Another recommend that one port, however, I went for main battery modification 3 to knock the reload down by 3 seconds, personally speaking. That's why I went through the port. Essentially, to increase the DPM. But all are very acceptable configurations, personally speaking. Now, I personally reinforced her secondaries as I like brawling and getting in the close quarters fight, so I built her very secondary focused. Now, some of the, most of the, they're cut the rank 1, such as gun feeder, consumables, emergency repair specialist, and preventative maintenance are all worthwhile getting. But realistically speaking, I prefer a consumable, spe consumable specialist. But definitely also recommend for tier 2, grease the gears. However, priority target would be a good one as well, depending on what way you want to play it. The same as AAA and SW expert if you wish to be pure anti-aircraft focused. Now Adrenaline Rush is definitely a recommendation for tier 3 as it does get lovely bonuses to your reload so definitely a big one to go for. Survivability, sorry, not survivability, improved repair party systems, improved repair party readiness, definitely could also be another good one to have. Focus fire train, not too bad, but personally speaking, adrenaline rush for definitely for your first tier 3 choice. For tier 4, definitely emergency repair expert for your fir like your first tier 4 choice. However, can also get concealment expert, which is definitely a good choice if you wish for that stealth build. Personally, fire prevention expert, mm, with your extended damage control system, don't see much of a need for it. So personally speaking, I would go for emergency repair. Or commander skills, that's my own personal choice. That's my own personal opinion on that one, but I'll, I digress. I'll leave it up to you. I can only give recommendations and talk through what was recommended. So, yeah, definitely digress and you and build it how you want to build it. I'm not going to tell you if you want to snipe, brawl, but personally speaking, I prefer the brawl owner. He's got the ra surveillance radar for parking up into a knife fight. I really do enjoy them battleships and playing a battleship like a battleship. When this game originally came out, getting up, tanking, and beating them as hard as I can <laughs> with a stick. <laughs> That's a good way to put it. Please. Is she worth it? 100%. Zuri is an excellent vessel. She's fun to play, good all rounder, solid damage per minute, and her protection, while it's not the best, it is solid enough and it can do get the job done. It's great for earning credits. So if she comes back in an event, 100% grinder. Is she worth maybe paying real money for? Mm, not so much. 
If you can get her for free, 100% go for it. 100% go for it. Get her for free. Now, one thing I do wish they had have brought kept in it is Steven Seagal. I know there was a lot of controversy about it, but it was just such a cool reference having Steven Seagal as a commander. But they changed it to John Doe because of, unfortunately, the references, uh, well, I shouldn't say reference, unfortunate situations that Steven Seagal got himself into. But, uh, it was, what was the movie? Under Siege, I think it was with him in the Missouri. But yeah, it was such a cool thing at the time, but he had to fuck it up. <laughs> Anyways, with that everyone, thanks again for watching, please like and subscribe, hope you enjoyed the video, and if you haven't already, please do join us over in Discord, as I'm hoping to get an active Discord community and an active plan on war, well, I say wargaming, uh, World of Warships, NA. So I'm hoping to get more of an active plan on that built up, and I'm also hoping to get more and more people on the stream, so we can do more giveaways. I'm dabbling an idea with adding a salt jar. I feel like a swear jar, but I'm salty, I put a pound into it. <laughs> Anyways, with everyone, thanks again for watching. Please like and subscribe, and I hope you enjoyed the video.